1 Timothy chapter 6. When we get a second hand, we're starting verse 12. Everybody's got it? Yeah. I'll wait for the one to go. I want you guys to see it for yourself. We're believers, we're Christians, we have authority, we have power. Man, that word power in the Greek is dunamis. We get the word in English dynamite from the word dunamis. Man, that might let us take dynamite. Man, we're all going to run to a corner of the room, we're out the door. Because nobody wants to get blown up, right? But we have power, dunamis, right? Given to us from God. We have authority, amen? We are, we're not victims, right? We're not victims of the enemy. We're not tools of the devil, right? We're vessels of the almighty God. We are all possessed with the Holy Spirit. Amen? you got to know that, right? Everybody got it? Amen. Okay. First uh, Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Check it out. Now, our weapons are not uh, with, with flesh and blood, but against it, but they're mighty in God, okay? Look what Amen. the Bible says here. This is the only time that God instructs you to fight. Okay. Fight the good fight of what? Faith. Okay, why? Because the devil is uh, bringing arguments against you in your mind and placing strongholds so you can't believe that Jesus is a God of grace. Right. Amen? Right. So if he can get your faith to be faulty, then you will believe in Christ and will receive the supply. Amen? Amen? Amen. So the only place we fight is in keeping the faith. In who? Okay, listen, let me read on. Fight the good fight of faith, lay a hold of eternal life to which you were also called to have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Look around all these witnesses, okay? Now, all of us here in this room have confessed Jesus, maybe not in front of each other, but the fact that we're here is our confession of our faith in Christ. Right. So look at all these witnesses. Church, fight the good fight. Not only are you, but look around. They're fighting that fight as well. Amen? We're all fighting the fight, the good fight of faith. Amen? Right. We're fighting to continue to believe in Jesus. Uh -huh. Amen? Who's ever been through in their life and at some point found yourself thinking maybe Jesus and God don't exist? Who's that? I have. Who else has? Raise your hand. Now you're perfect. Everyone at one time. <laughs> All of you lose your hands. No. I have been there. And you know why? Because the devil came into my mind and tried to tell me that God isn't real because I have no blessings to prove that he exists. Right? The devil came with the law and said to you, said to me, Sheldon, look at all the good things you've done. Look at all these things you've done. What do we have to show for it? God isn't real, obviously, because you have no blessing. You wasted all of your time, all of your early 20s in a youth ministry. You could have been out kicking and having fun. You know what I'm saying? And I thought to myself, wow, what if God isn't real? I'd be wasting my whole time. That was a, a thought. That's a high thing that is exalting itself above the knowledge of God. Amen? And I thought to myself, all this is a lie. We've been wasting our time. And blah, 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 blah. I was called a pastor, and that's not happening. And blah, 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 blah. My brother passed away. I had every reason to give up on God. Every single reason to give up on God. But God finally came to me and showed me his grace. Amen? Finally showed me his grace. Like I said, God told me I never wanted to do the work to get my approval in the first place. I love you. Amen? Yeah. So what did I begin to do for the first time? Fight to keep my faith. Yeah. What? My faith in Jesus, that he is a yeah. God of grace, he is yeah. a good God. Yeah. He has already met my needs. Amen? Amen? And now, with these tools, I can put thoughts into captivity. Amen. And I can cast down strongholds without counseling in four-hour sessions, you know what I'm saying, every other week, to help me with my problems. I can go to God. I can go to Christ, who is my defense. Yeah. Amen? Who goes before me. Amen? But I want you to understand that you have been equipped with the tools. Yeah. You have to understand who your, who your enemy is. Right. Right? It's your mind and the devil. When you know this, you can, by the Spirit of God, put to death the deeds of the body through casting down arguments and strongholds in your own life. Church, you don't have to be addicted if you don't want to be. Amen? Amen? Seriously. Now, you got to hear me. If you don't want to be. Right. Some of us like our addictions, let's be honest. But if you don't want to be, and it's affecting people around you, and it's hurting them, by Jesus' name, you can break that stronghold. Amen? Amen. By having your thoughts meditate and stay on Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. This is good stuff. Yes, it is. Think about it. So, fight the good fight of faith. Who should ever say, keep the faith? When I was a kid, I used to watch the cartoons of the um, 
stories from the Bible. And this story, I think it was uh, like Paul down the side of the wall after Rahab had Rahab had uh, hid the spies, which let them down, going down the side of the wall. He's like, keep the faith, brother. Keep the faith. He's going down. I was like, yes. <laughs> and that, and that just means something to me. Yeah. We should be saying to each other, all right, man, have a, have a good day, man. Hey, keep the faith. We should be saying, I mean, we're Christians. I mean, that's not embarrassing. No. You know, we're like, all right, man, peace out. All right, y'all, for real, though, one. <laughs> but one means goodbye, apparently. One. Is that one love? That means one love. You know, so we say all these things to each other, we see each other, and we have exit phrases. Why can't we exit with the phrase of, hey, man, keep the faith? I don't know what's going to happen to my friend when he goes home. Right. The devil's going to attack his mind and faith. make him think God isn't real. But what is the last thing I said to him was, hey, keep the faith, brother. We walk away, and he goes home, and he walks away, yeah, yeah, keep the faith. And when the devil attacks his mind, he goes, no, I know who I am in Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Keep the faith, man. Keep the faith. You know what I'm saying? Do something good for each other. I right, man, peace. Keep the faith. Well, that's not really it, but you know. Don't, 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 don't do this. That's the devil. The sign of God from that. I'm not going there today. But, um, <laughs> but you know, and move. Keep the faith. You know what I'm saying, man? Can we do that for each other? Can we encourage each other? We are the brotherhood in Christ, right? We're all of the same mind, the same faith, man. The same thing, man. Rise up and live. Keep the faith. Yeah, that's going to be our new one, Barry. <laughs> okay, First Peter. Let's go there. Good, good, good. You get to say amen. While you're flipping pages, I just want to encourage you. Um, the devil uses a lot of different tools to influence your mind. Okay, um, it's all over the media. One of the main things he uses is entertainment to trick your mind. I'm not saying become all spiritual where you can't go to movies now. Because back in the day when the churches were under law, we made everything the devil. We, <laughs> seriously, we, everything was the devil. There's a spirit on everything. We got the oh, spirit on the chair. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we even gave Jezebel a spirit and made that a demon. Church, listen to me. There's no such thing as the Jezebel spirit. Jezebel doesn't get to have a spirit. Right. right. If I die, if I do a bunch of bad stuff and die, there's not a show in spirit now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the Bible says, accident in the body, present with the Lord. Right. Preachers right. have done sermons on yeah. the Jezebel spirit yeah, and have up. empowered in the minds of believers a knowledge of the devil, mm -hmm. of a false demon named Jezebel who was a person who, by the grace of God, we just might see in heaven. Yeah, who knows? We don't know. Yeah, that's right. All of you will be apologizing. Jezebel, I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's like, it's okay. <laughs> All of you hated me. And she didn't know. Right? She was a victim of sin, like all of us, right? She doesn't get to have a spirit now. Come on. It's like a saint. I had to talk about that because I've heard, I've heard it so many years and after a while, I thought, why are we giving Jezebel authority of spirit? She, she was influenced, influenced by the devil. The devil didn't say, all right, I'm going to use you as a Jezebel spirit. They're all know you. You know, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. We made her up too. Mary's not bloody. But look at that. It's a mockery of Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Amen? But don't give authority to the devil by believing in all these spirits. And that, if the devil uses entertainment and things like that to fool you, so be careful, church, of what music you listen to. I'm not saying don't listen to music that doesn't talk about Jesus, but you you know when the devil is influencing you through music. No. You yeah. know, because God has placed inside of you his yeah. Holy Spirit, who is your guide and your teacher. He will lead you in the path of right. He'll tell you. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. You know what you know. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You know?